possibly the scariest thought we street photographers share is what if someone confronts me? It's that nightmare scenario that could leave us embarrassed and scared to go out and shoot again. So how can we prepare ourselves for these situations? And how can we turn these interactions from something scary into something positive? Not every confrontation in street photography needs to end in tears. It can actually be a positive experience if you play your cards right. Being confronted by the public might be the worst fear we share as street photographers because the last thing you want is to be confronted and potentially offend someone while you're practicing something you're supposed to enjoy. But realistically, what's the worst that could happen? Gonna have a bad time. So where's the part where we have a good time? We first, before putting ourselves out there, need to establish our inner intent. That is our inner intent as street photographers. Let me explain. Knowing your intent when you're out taking photos means that at any moment someone can ask you what you're doing and you can answer them clearly. If they ask, you can just say what you're doing and why you're doing it. As an example, if you're someone who likes to shoot candid street photography and you typically shoot people wearing interesting outfits, you could keep this intent in your pocket. I'm a photographer. I mainly photograph people wearing interesting outfits. I do this to paint a picture of our city as it is today. I noticed your hat and in this light that we have here, I thought it made a lovely image. I hope that's okay. Presenting your reason politely will typically diffuse most situations. Being polite and being willing to compromise on say deleting a photo will get you a lot of the way and typically people won't ask you to delete the photo. At the moment you may not have thought clearly about what your intent is but there are a few factors we can think on to come up with one that's concise and makes sense. Some of the factors it's worth considering are what kind of images do I usually share online? What is interesting about these images to myself? What do other people find interesting about these images? How do I want to remember or showcase my images in the future? The alternative to this is not knowing your intent. And this certainly has negatives and this is typically what scares most of us. When taking someone's photo and they see you, they may confront you and then you just say, I'm a street photographer. And they might say, I don't care what you are. Don't take my photo. You see what I mean? Gonna have a bad time. This situation is already difficult to diffuse. You've already clearly said, I'm a street photographer, and they've already said, don't take my photo. So you're already on opposite ground rather than trying to work with them. But if we focus our energy into knowing our intent, this situation might not need to occur in the first place. I'd like to preface this next section with, I understand we don't like taking street portraits. I don't really, but there is a benefit here. I enjoy shooting candid shots mainly, and I know you might do as well, but using street portraits as a practice process can then make us more comfortable when shooting candid. Let me explain. Developing your confidence when interacting with the public and knowing your clear intent when you're explaining to them why you want to take their photo is a great way for you to sort of feel more at ease when shooting candid, knowing that if someone asks you what you're doing, you already know the drill, you already know what to say and how to get them on your side. As an example, a few weeks back, I was out shooting some photos and I asked a couple on the tram stop in Manchester if I could take a photo of their dog because, you know, dog pics. And they were holding their small dog and the woman just immediately looked at me, sort of clutching the dog, kind of like, why? And then they both sort of said, oh yeah, what for? They both looked at me very suspiciously and I explained as politely and overly friendly as I possibly could. My intent at the moment when asking people for photos of their dogs sounds a little bit like this. Sorry to bother you, I'm a photographer and I've recently been photographing dogs in the city. Do you mind if I take a photo of your dog? This is typically followed with, I'll only be two seconds and a have a lovely day just to say goodbye. And when I've been asked, what is this for? I say, I've only started in the last few weeks, but I'm a big dog person. I love seeing dogs around town and the mix of breeds in this part of Manchester is really interesting. Ideally, I want to put these photos into a little collection, but at the moment, I'm just trying things out. While all of this at the moment might sound a bit too simple or by the book, I understand there is some nuance that we need to get into here. Obviously, everything I'm going over right now comes from my own personal experience. So it's how I handle myself on jobs, how I handle myself in public. I'm genuinely quite a relaxed and relatively upbeat guy. However, I understand that if you think your vibe might be a little bit more reserved or quiet, this sort of thing can be even more challenging. I consider myself lucky that I just lean into like my British politeness and that tends to work out for me. But really just practicing like an open demeanor and being relaxed and easy to get along with can solve so many problems even when you approach someone or take a photo of someone who does not want their photo taken. As long as you approach things politely, people tend to not think badly of you. 
If you're mainly interested in shooting candid street photography, similar to me, there's actually a lot of benefit in terms of interacting with people proactively versus reactively when someone comes up and confronts you. And there's a reason that this posed photo strategy actually creates a bit of a presence in the immediate area you're in where you're taking photos. As we touched on, being seen taking photos by just the general public and passers-by is a good thing. This announces to everyone in that little immediate area that you are taking photos and it's okay. Especially if you've done a post shot with someone and they are sort of happily letting you take the photo and you say bye to each other. That means that everyone in the area knows they're a photographer, they're taking photos, and they're okay with him taking photos, so good. Doing this means that even if you want to lift your camera up to your eye, it doesn't really matter. No one's going to notice as much because they already know you're a photographer. Versus keeping your camera sort of down by your hip the whole time and then randomly lifting it up to take a photo and someone sees you and it looks suspicious like you're directly trying to take their photo. So by setting up a few pose shots with people, it just lets everyone in the area know that you're a good person, you're just kind of interacting with the community and you're a bit of a people person. Absolutely the worst thing you can do is conceal your camera. Like I, I obviously love having a discreet camera to have on me, but at the same time, hiding it and then sneaking a photo or something like that is not, it's not smart. Don't do it because it looks suspicious. It looks like you're trying to steal images off people versus like actively being like, I'm a photographer, everyone look at me, I'm a photographer, don't mind me, I'm just taking some photos. Remember, if you conceal your camera, gonna have a bad time. This can sometimes be a lot easier if you're shooting with someone else. So going out on a shoot with a friend, you tend to be chatting between yourselves, and it means when you walk into a scene, you're not that loner with a camera. And while I don't think you always have to be out with someone else, it can be good practice in terms of openly chatting and like showing each other your cameras in order to then have the public see what you're doing. And this definitely encourages you to do what you're supposed to do. As a street photographer, take photos of the street. Don't reserve yourself from not taking photos because you're worried people will see you. Be obvious about taking photos and people will accept you in the space. If you regularly lift your camera and take photos, people won't question why you're lifting up your camera. They won't immediately think you're taking their photo, they just think you're taking photos of the area in general. Something I like to live by in most scenarios in life is play the fool. This comes from the idea that sometimes just pleading ignorance and pretending you had no idea what you're doing tends to get you out of trouble. I learned to do it at school, I've then gone to do it in various situations, you know, security on private land where you're not supposed to film, things like that. Just pretending you don't really know what's going on means that a lot of the time people give you the benefit of the doubt and let you go on your way. Sort of showing a lack of understanding and like respecting that that person, the other person knows more than you is a great way for them to actually help you through a situation and not get annoyed at you for doing something you didn't know you were supposed to do. This is especially good if you know that you're doing it on purpose. It means you can kind of just act the part of, I don't know what I'm doing, and people tend to let you off quite easy. An example list that I really like that isn't really about interacting with people as much, but kind of how you handle yourself is Gary Winogrand. From some images and videos I've seen, would pretend that his camera wasn't really working or that he didn't really understand his camera while he was actually grabbing candids. So he had a very fidgety approach while he was actually taking photos and it meant people sometimes would look at him a little bit curiously like, what's that guy doing? and he would get some interesting images. The reason why I wanna emphasize this kind of playing the fool and interacting with people, I think is partially because a lot of street photographers I seem to interact with, see, I don't know, there's, there's like an element of like entitlement that you, you deserve to take everyone's photos or that other people don't have any rights in you taking their photos. And while on public land in most countries, that kind of is the case, you can take anyone's photo legally, I still think being a nice person is important as well. Like you don't want an interaction ending with you taking a photo and keeping it and the other person knowing about it and being angry about it. Ideally, you wanna have both parties happily going on their merry way and you get a nice image at the end of it. I wanted to make this section of the video all about my candid street photography tips that I'd like to share, but I realized there's too much and too much detail to try and go into this in just one section. 
So if you want to see a video on that, which I'm hoping to do, drop a camera emoji in the comments below this video. Having your work immediately to hand can be a great way to prepare yourself for any encounter you might have with the public. Say if you want to take someone's photo and you really want to take their photo and you ask them and they're not really down for it, if you can show them like a little photo book or even just your Instagram, they're more likely to say yes. But also if someone catches you taking their photo like a candid and they say, what are you doing? You can then say, hey, I'm a street photographer. I photograph the city. Uh, your outfit looks awesome in this light. This is some of my work. I share it a bit online. I put it in like little books. Um, no harm if you want me to delete the photo. That's typically how I would handle that sort of situation. I've actually got a couple of little photo books on the way that are like key ring sized, just so I have an extra little physical version of my work that I can show to people in these situations if it happens. I've talked a bit about taking photos of dogs recently and I actually did an interview on the Underexposed channel where you can see lots of me taking photos of dogs in this video over here. Go check it out.